So hello again, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on today's webinar. Uh, my name is Sarah LaFay. I'm the Director of Marketing for IQ. Um, we are the creators of Perfectly Clear Automatic Image Enhancement Technology. Um, school portrait photographers can increase the speed of their workflow by more than 300% with our automatic color correction, automatic retouching, and automatic cropping technology. But that's not what we're here for today. Today, I have David Crandall. He is the Executive Director of School Photographers of America, or SPOA for short. Um, so I have him here with me today. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Excited to be here. And for those of you that don't know, um, SPOA is the National Trade Association for School Photography in Yearbooks with a mission to advocate, educate, preserve, protect, and promote the great school traditions of school photography and yearbooks. Um, so they're also hosting an upcoming conference in Greenville, South Carolina in July. Um, IQ and me personally uh, will be attending. And I have to say, I live in Charleston right now, and I'm very excited to not have to hop on a plane just to attend a conference for once. Um, so really excited about the Greenville location. We were also just chatting about how amazing Greenville actually is and all of the restaurants and things to do there, um, not to mention the beautiful Southern weather, um, but we will get into all of that conference information later. So first I would like to just focus on you, David. Sure. Uh, I would love you to just start us off with a little bit about your past and how you became a leader in the school and sports photography industry. Just give us a little background to get going. Sure. So um, I really got into school photography when I was probably like six or seven years old. Uh, so like many, uh, it was a family thing. My mom was a uh, uh, one of the beginning of women in in life touch as a uh, as a territory manager. Uh, so one of the first female leaders um, as a as a territory manager. So I grew up in that culture. And back then, you know, anybody that's grown up in school pictures and has kids, I used to sit in front of the TV and strip envelopes and stack up money and uh, probably broke every child labor law there was. Um, and, you know, it was it was an exciting day in my household if someone paid coins, because that's how I got paid. Uh, you had to keep the coins. And so anyways, grew up in a studio, um, just really started photographing seniors when I was probably 15 and uh, thought it was just a lot of fun. Love taking pictures and uh, taking sports and candidates. Had the blessing and opportunity to graduate from Clemson University with a major in marketing and finance and uh, was really thought I was going into banking. I uh, wanted to move to Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, and work for one of the big banks and and uh, had offers, but not as 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 nice as Life Touch's offer. And when you're getting out of college, that money matters. So accepted the opportunity and had a lot of success there, moved into, uh, I was territory manager, moved into uh, leadership uh, at the uh, corporate level, director of partnerships, and then left in 2012 joined Strawbird Studios and had the opportunity to help uh, advance their national reach. Uh, we had significant growth during the tenure there, which was always fun to manage uh, and be a part of. Um, and uh, literally was on the uh, that midlife 40 area where I was going, man, I've got a thousand uh, nights at a Marriott and I've got a million miles on Delta and there's got to be more to life than this. Um, and so made the decision that I was actually getting out of the industry and going to go back to being a small business entrepreneur, um, which I am and have other businesses, but uh, COVID happened during that time frame, And so uh, the industry realized we needed a lobbying side, um, you know, with the the failure or whatever you define it of PSPA where it, you know, went away. So we needed an active trade association to help, you know, everything from advocate and protect rights from copyright law uh, to, you know, negotiation with the software industry, yearbook industry. And so I had the blessing and opportunity to be a part of the group that was forming SPOA. Never saw um, at the beginning that I was going to, literally be staff 
Um, and so uh, a young lady by name, Cindy Gallion, that was on a Zoom one day said, David, you ever thought about being and, and running this? And I was like, no, I didn't actually. And, and so that's how I'm here. And it's so excited. It's one of those opportunities in life. You get to work for a nonprofit. And if you've never done that, which obviously I had not, I was always been on the, the sales or marketing side with strategy. And to sit back and do something for the greater good is probably the coolest feeling you'll ever have. Like there is, I've had a lot of things in my career that you would define as, as um, worthy and uh, something that you would put up on a pedestal. And I would tell you, spending time with those kids up there, my family, uh, and in serving uh, all companies and trying to make this industry healthy and uh, get rid of some unhealthy practices and promote us um, it is one of the coolest accomplishments I, I think I've ever had. So yeah, that's kind of SPOA in my story. Yeah, thank you so much. That's great. Um, it does definitely already, even though SPO is only a few years old, have seen such a, a difference in the industry and just what you've been able to already give to the industry, um, which we will, I'm sure, get into a little bit as we continue to discuss. Um, but I did also have to point out that I immediately noticed your orange um, chair behind you. And I assume that has to do with all of your Clemson gear and, and tying all that office decor in. I'm just a tad bit of a fan. So you know, what you're not seeing is the other side. And I, I have players, helmets and footballs and that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm an avid fan without a question. So Definitely have the school spirit. Um, well, you already did tell us a little bit about how you came to become involved in SPOA, um, but can you touch on just a little bit of, of what exactly SPOA is trying to accomplish sure. for the industry? Absolutely, man. That's a broad stroke, and it's really hard to say because we're doing so many different uh, pieces. I, I'll give you an example. There's an article if you go to the Charlotte Observer. Um, that's Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I went and spoke at a school board meeting and they only gave you two minutes and the superintendent, I had had a perfect two minute pitch. I had practiced it all day. And um, the superintendent teed me up to uh, something that I had to go off kilter. So um, she just said something about being in alignment and they were so far from removed from being in alignment. I had to call it out, which took me off. Uh, off of my script. <clears throat> so, but I was able to follow up and had a reporter contact me. And uh, so a recent article came out. It was very, you know, obviously we're school of photography. We love our entire mes message to be shared. Um, I think she did a, if you go find this article, she did a great job at kind of being in the middle, represent what the district's saying, represent what we're saying. The real key is do parents find out? And so uh, Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools has a mandated policy of, of commission. Um, and so they, they say they start at 20% and go up to 50, but most schools are mandating 50. And, you know, when you sit and you can have this type of conversation and, and which is hard to get with a district or hard to get with the leadership when they build something like this, um, it's hard for them to understand that a parent, when you have that conversation with a parent and they see a package cost of $40, but in reality, it's only 20 because it's a hundred percent markup. 99% of parents, as I sit and do focus groups throughout my career, uh, 30 plus years in this industry, parents don't want to fund their own school. They'd rather sell cookie dough or whatever the case to their neighbors. And they want to be able to, and we already know these facts from the West, from the um, northeast that, you know, there's schools that are impoverished communities, uh, a huge unemployment rate, and companies go in and they're not competing on commission. They're competing on what services, the quality level of customer service that they can provide, and their cost to the, the parent. And we know, and we've seen that, we hear our, our company members that are in those markets, they're like, man, you know, when you offer packages that range from so-and-so to so-and-so, we still have a 70% buy rate. And yet you can go into parts of Georgia and South Carolina where, or North Carolina, where they have mandates like this. And you're lucky if you're at a 31% buy rate, and that's a great school. And so now you have to ask yourself a question if your school photographer is, man, I got a 31% buy rate and I'm still running a profit. Well, really, are you? 
Because the other question is, seven, that's telling you almost 70% of parents don't want to buy anything because they don't see the value. The problem is they, they know the value is there. We've seen that all over the country. The problem is, the real problem is, is they just don't know. And so uh, I'm trying to do what we're doing in Charlotte all over the country. Uh, and, and we are even looking at right now writing uh, legislation at each state level uh, that will prohibit companies from doing rebating and commission. You know, school photography was never intended to be a fundraising mechanism for schools. Uh, it was completely built. If you read the Bark Sales story, the Bark Sales were the first ones in school pictures. Uh, it was to help educators uh, to identify a name with a face. And, and so that's, you know, that's what we are today. Uh, if we were not an essential service, then why were we still taking, we had many companies still taking pictures even during COVID and they were figuring out because the schools not only wanted them, they needed them in their school administrative software, this, the year date changeover for safety initiatives, ID cards, testing, there's, there's various, there's tons of reasons. And so, um, you know, that's the part of the educate and protect side. We had another company that found some TikTok videos and, and some YouTube videos about uh, watermark removal. And so we immediately in our law firm got engaged with uh, YouTube and TikTok, asking them to remove that, finding who the copyright holders are so that they can stop uh, that type of. And so, you know, it's that to the next level, the training and, and then the, uh, uh, the, the other, you know, we did a national partnership with Dale Carnegie. Dale Carnegie is an international company and, and so one of the world's largest leading training organizations in the country. Um, and so whether you're customer service or you're a new supervisor in a lab, uh, they have, I mean, it is pennies on the dollar, the cost of these trainings, which that helps raise the tide for all ships. Um, we're in the midst right now of a buying uh, co-op. Uh, we have a uh, really excited, literally was on the phone with UPS today. Um, and we are negotiating a contract with both FedEx or UPS. We'll see which one has the best rates, uh, and took, you know, 40 to 50 some odd companies volumes together. And so if you're a business and Hey, you spend $60,000 on shipping a year, or you spend $200,000, or maybe you spend $1 million in shipping a year. Can you imagine when you're in the large eight figures of combining all that volume, what discounts can be for everyone. And so we want to constantly bring value to our membership. Uh, and so that people, when they look and go, hey, if I join and I'm a startup business and it's 42 bucks a month, what do I get out of that? That we have a laundry list of companies that can go through and say, well, first SEO, like and we can, I can show that we have a listing. We're seeing 2,800 uh, hits to our find a school photographer a week. Um, now, and that's schools looking for school photography companies. And, you know, that we're becoming at the top of Google uh, because of those hits with all those companies coming together. Uh, but the purchasing co-ops, the national background check um, saved dozens of companies, tens of thousands of dollars. And so we're, we're trying to say, hey, we realize you're all competitors, but are there areas in which we could all work together to like save money and be more profitable for all. And those are the areas in which SPO is trying to, to make sure that we're utilizing. Uh, we're getting ready to do a hotel national contract. Um, and so, you know, those are the types of tools and resources I could go on, but I don't want to bore all of our, our <laughs> viewers, but uh, we're in a lot of fronts. And when you start thinking about state legislation and writing bills, having sponsors and all that type of stuff. There's a, I mean, if you could see our legal bill, it's, it's <laughs> something like, and that's what I was never prepared for. Um, but holy mackerel, but I see the good in which it's already doing. I see the good. And, uh, you know, we just created a universal, uh, school administrative, um, uh, software standard, uh, which both import and export. So the export of, you know, the power schools, the skyward infinite campuses of the world, their data sets uh, to school photographers and yearbook companies, which include, you can go find it on our website, some pretty beautiful stuff. We, we have all the legal language uh, from the director of FERPA in which we need to have stuff put. Um, it has helped mitigate and, and give companies what they need out of districts and schools because of that document and, and the power of unification in that. 
And it's also set everybody up pretty crystal clear. The document says, hey, as long as you accept this standard, the intent is all companies will still plan to honor this as a complimentary service. However, you know, if you're new software and your district got a new software and they want a custom, it gives the opportunity and it says right there that uh, most companies do plan to most likely charge uh, for that export in the future. Um, you know, and, you know, I was having a conversation yesterday and where, you know, the school photography or school photographers, for some reason, I don't know why, but we're almost inundated and brain taught that everything should be free. Uh, yet, I don't know anything else. I've never met another industry that gives away as much free stuff as this industry does um, and then complains about it. And, and so <laughs> that was sarcasm. But at the end of the day, it's like you don't have to. Um, there, there are some big companies out there that have brought just said, hey, across the board, here's our commission. Here's what you get. And if you're going early and you need this, but your participation is not there, we're charging for this. And there is lots of government grants out there uh, for student safety initiatives that ID cards qualify for and many other uh, things. And the companies that are utilizing that the most are having insane success with schools right now. So um, again, we're working on a lot of different fronts. So I know that was a broad answer. So <laughs> no, I, I feel like we could talk literally all day long about all the amazing things that SPOA is doing for the industry. Um, but just really having that community and partnership um, with all the things that you're doing. And yes, it's so hard for small businesses to be able to do something or get something done by themselves. But when we have so many small businesses all put together, um, that's where really the magic happens. And again, I've already seen so much that you've been doing. So um, I'd say, even though it's only been a few years, it's it's yeah. already a success. Well, again, definitely not me. I'm just blessed to work with some very talented board members um, that are very open with their their time, their talent, and their treasure. And that's what's really given us the, this opportunity. So, Yeah, so we kind of talked a little bit, or you touched on, on this a little bit, but lately there are plenty of headlines saying that the photography industry is dying or that the print industry is dead. I do not think that is true at all. Um, photography, especially school portraits, they're a way to preserve a memory. Um, can you speak to that? Yeah, um, I was, and I'll say this first, um, I have a about a quarterly or uh, semi-annual phone call with the largest yearbook companies in the country, and it was unanimous, uh, the last call like two months ago, that nostalgia has came back stronger than ever during COVID. Uh, they're seeing yearbook uh, participation increases in all segments and all markets, um, unlike they've seen before. I say that to also the school photography in industry and the K through eight yearbook industry. Um, moms and dads and grandparents have valued those traditions more than ever. Um, we're actually, uh, one thing, I will come back to that, but one thing we're doing is we're actually building a universal commercial. We're paying a creative company. A lot of companies have come together to contribute towards that cost. And it's really just going to be, it's launching at our summer meeting, but because we're a, a nonprofit, we can buy airtime for free and give them the tax write-off. And so uh, it's really cool when you start to have like that emotional connection with a yearbook or school pictures with mom and grandparents. So like, oh yeah, we need to buy that. And so people try to do it individually by company, but the power of all of us coming together and utilizing those funds to do something super professional, it's kind of like that got milk, you know, did mm -hmm. almost 18 years ago, all the milk dairy farmers got together and, you know, they, and it was very successful. And so we're, we're in the starts of that, but going back to that, um, we are seeing participation increases, uh, um, you know, where can you attribute that? You know, all I get to do, we definitely have a national survey that's out um, that helps answer all these questions to many people. Uh, the insights report, anybody that saw that last year was absolutely, there's one, one report that everybody, we want the whole industry to have, but there's an insights that was an extra like 57 pages that was detailed of the, the characteristics and why. And so it really helps marketing departments build. And, and so, you know, there were still companies offering 
exchanges only and their bottom packages and then wallets and they never got to. And yet when you look at what moms want, number one, five by seven, number two, eight by 10, number three, three by six, number four, four by six, you didn't see a two by three or a one by two. And so, and that was in the, you know, tens of thousands. And so why are we offering something that mom really doesn't want? Right. And so we're, we're seeing companies pivot and have packaging and configurations that allow mom to build what she wants, how she wants it, when she wants it, which is huge. Uh, that's been a big shift. Uh, obviously, COVID um, forced a lot of companies to um, move to uh, um, smarter ways and, and have better business partners and their shopping carts and that experience and how mom can buy and how fast that transaction is. And we've seen huge increases in that as well. Um, this is not just for the US. I, I happen to be on a phone call with uh, the largest school photography company in the UK and they do almost 45% of the US or the UK marketplace. And we were sharing and collaborating on some of these things. And it was a lot of alignment. And it's really interesting uh, that the world we live in is is valuing print more more so than ever. We got a long way to go, but if anybody happens, if you go into YouTube, go into news reports, look at what you saw for almost a week when Russia invaded Ukraine. If you look, almost every single image when it was of people leaving, when they were getting on buses and trains, they were getting on with pictures, albums, prints. They weren't taking gold. They weren't taking, they were taking what was precious to them. And, and so we all know that when you, uh, when there's a fire in a home, uh, one of the first, you'd make sure your animals and your, your children are out. And then you people scramble to get photo albums and those things. And so there is no doubt that, that pictures are alive. Are we seeing changes in how that's delivered? Absolutely. But there's still a lot of value in school photography and your books um, and, you know, I saw a posting last night about the skies falling because Kodak's not going to deliver paper. Well, it doesn't matter. Kodak's only one player. There's three other players that you can buy paper from. And so they're, they're still going to be present, printing silver halite. And there be, there's going to be companies that have held on to uh, Naritsu's and they're going to be printing silver halite for quite some time. Um, you know, there's, there's so many different print uh, solutions today. Um, the sky is not falling, y'all. At the end of the day, people are still buying pictures. This is a strong industry. Um, and the the unfortunate side is some people have not really embraced the why are we growing. And so I'm going to give you an example. Let's say I'm a, a Midwest, Southwest company, and I'm my own salesperson. But last year I picked up, you know, 15 new schools because they called me. And I'm like, man, I'm not, I don't need a salesperson anymore. I don't need a service person because people are just calling me. That's going to not, that at some point, let's say if there's a big company or a regional or national company that's shedding some market share because of performance, or they may intend to be, maybe they were schools that were heavy service. Um, at the end of the day, you still better be protected because once those companies lock up stuff, right, and they get performing again, those sales are not going to be as easy. And, and you're really going to not want to have order takers. You're going to really want to be able to go still grow your business. Um, so it's it's an interesting marketplace right now. I, I, the, most of the people that say the sky is falling um, either are not in the know of what truly is happening uh, or it's isolated by a region. But uh, we are seeing the growth of more, I want to say, my records show there was 69 brand new school picture companies last year, and we're already on, I think, 82 for this year. And so wow. people are getting into this business. Uh, I probably receive phone calls from VC firms <laughs> or consulting firms uh, weekly uh, that want to understand this business and how long do we see that growth kind of coming from, you know, not necessarily that it's uh, growth in the aspect of there's not new schools being built. Uh, but school acquisition through independence and, and regional players. Um, and I don't see that changing anytime in the near future for at least the next three years. Um, and so uh, new technology bring new, brings new advancement. And, and so I think we still have a long ways to go, but healthy industry without a question.
Yeah, I completely agree. I can't imagine a world without school portraits or um, back in the day, which I'm sure moms still do this, but you walk up the stairs and you have every single school portrait throughout the years of the kids and now all of that. Um, so I definitely I mean, this is something that's been so important since they were invented. Um, so that that definitely all makes sense. And then just being able to pivot with the times as well, um, like you were saying, where there's different marketing opportunities now, there's different packaging opportunities and how you're actually selling all of these. Um, just to pivot for a moment, I remember seeing in your um, like statistics report that you created with Photo Merchant about there are parents that prefer to have both the digital copy and the print, um, which was not available back when I was having my school portraits taken. Um, but there is so much opportunity to be able to pivot in this industry and learn from the data and increase your sales for sure. Yeah. And again, we're the, I told you a lot of things we're working on. I mean, we have so many other uh, things in the pipeline, one of which is copyright licensing. And so when you think about that, what do you, what do you mean, Dave? Well, I'm talking about Disney, Barbie, um, Marvel. And imagine that you can come through SPOA through your membership and you can license frames and those types of things and borders for those photos. Woo. Now, obviously, uh, you know, there's a cost associated with using that, uh, that will be owed, but you talk about bringing those type of solutions to kids and parents that that's their favorite. I'm Spider-Man and I want Spider-Man on all my, there are huge opportunities that we're working on uh, that we're really excited to be hopefully launching some of these at our, our summer meeting and then uh, to our members exclusively um, here in the near future. So uh, again, the, our job advocate, uh, promote, that's under the promote, our, our, you know, that commercial, the resources that we can do all together versus just individually is, is just massive. So. Yeah, that's super exciting. Um, and that does kind of bring us into my next question for you. Um, so as an automatic photo enhancement company, um, I obviously want to talk to you about the photography aspect of this industry and what kind of trends you're seeing when it comes to things like shooting and editing. Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, you know, the, it's, it's, it's interesting when you even look at from a training aspect, you got all these boot camps and people are like, which boot camp do I go to? Um, we've developed a, what I call a, a anybody from, um, hopefully I don't offend anybody by saying this, that's not, and that's if they're listening in from Europe, uh, but uh, we always tend to say neutral is Switzerland. Uh, and and so um, the the idea being that we're going to do a boot camp, and in that boot camp, we're 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 showing everybody's workflow, everybody's solutions, so that you as a business owner can come in and go, oh, I didn't even know they were out there, or I had no idea that lab did that, or that perfectly clear could take this off my plate. Oh my gosh, you know how many hours we've been spending, and so uh, you know we're really excited about that. That's that's a such a broad question though that um, you've got you've got a uh, company like um, Nikon, right? And so you think about a camera platform that people photograph on Nikon, they use probably three different Nikons that's probably popular to photograph on. A lot of people were on Canon's uh, 7D because it had a lock feature that allowed you to uh, lock down that camera so that your photographer that accidentally shot the wedding the night before last on your camera didn't get, have the wrong settings and uh, everything else. So uh, that camera has, has been very popular for many, many folks in the volume photography world. And they got companies like Sony that are developing a uh, very um, unique, uh, I can't let the cat out of the bag. So they're one of our partners. So um, it's going to solve a lot of people's problems. I can tell you that much uh, from that standpoint. Um, and so there's a lot of different workflows. There's a lot of different solutions out there, but I, I honestly would just say, um, you know, there's, there's no doubt that the technology that we have today, um, we all need to provide. And that's the key. Um, everyone in this industry, I don't care if you're in the sports industry, I don't care if you're in the yearbook industry, your images better compete with mom's iPhone and be better. 
And so you really need to make sure your photographers understand light, understand what's going to capture that separation. And when you start looking at like photography contests, when people look at a picture on the wall or on the screen, it's that one that literally the light is amazing. The impact of the photograph, the emotional that it evokes out of people are like, whoa. And so that comes with biz business partners, like perfectly clear and IQ. I just did a little commercial for you. Um, but <clears throat> that's what, that's what really, I think sometimes we lose the focus of uh, in this volume industry that at the end of the day, you know, there used to be really popular, still very popular with some big companies, uh, but it's called speculation. And it's where they're printing a package and they're sending it home to mom. And it might be five sheets of paper. And I've had people look at me like, aren't they just wasting paper? And, and they're just losing their tail. And I'm like, no, because if you deliver excellent photography and you, maybe it's a two pose option, but y'all have some zoom features that go in and it looks like it was three different images for that child. And they're great photographs. You see money like you've never seen before <laughs> on, on participation. And so at the end of the day, you know, I've seen some companies lose their, um, I kind of, their mission and their vision. They became sales organizations or they became salespeople that happen to be in school of photography. And at the end of the day, we need to not lose sight that, you know, a principal, if we just got, got one superintendent, one principal on this phone call and this webinar, and we just said, what do you want out of a school of photographer? You know what most of their answers are going to be? I want yeah. a very easy picture day. That's not that I want my parents to be happy and, and not to be gouged on pricing. And literally, you know, I realized that this, this phone, it's going to ring. That's, that's fine. Everybody, we're all human. I manage teachers and, you know, every day is, it brings a new HR scenario. But at the end of the day, everybody has issues. I just need to know that you're not going to let your issues turn into problems. And if every company just really focused their customer service on that front and delivered excellent organized school picture days, uh, that were gave mom every choice. You know, there's some companies uh, to one thing about this, this, not just in the enhancement, but the workflow that they're only giving mom the opportunity to order online, man, you're missing the mark. There's so many families today that do not want to do transactions over the internet or through their phone. And they want to write a check or they want to pay cash. And so if your workflow does not involve both, I would tell you, you're not doing the what's equitable for all uh and making it fair for everybody um and so you're you're missing some sales by not doing so um but school principals aren't looking for you to come in and be a marketing company and wrap their walls they're not looking for you to come in and they literally want a school picture company that knows what the heck they're doing and and then on top of that is consistent backs it up maybe sends the same photographer so that this photographers know where to set up and they're not scrambling around wondering what door to go through and that the teacher is actually, Oh, Jamie, good to see you again. How's your family? Like at the end of the day, that's what, that's what schools and districts want across the country. And I just think sometimes we, we lo lose sight of that. And so delivering excellent, high quality photography, having appropriate business partners that give moms the enhancements they're looking for is, is the key to this success. So. Thank you. That was definitely um, a broad question. So this is a great reminder for everyone that um, we do have the Q&A feature here. So if there were any or are any specific trends or um, just anything around the photography aspect that you did want to know, um, then this would be a great time to sure. just throw in a few questions I'm, um, I'm that we'll get answer, to at the end. Yeah, I'm going to answer one right off the top because I just saw it. Um, it's www.schoolsafety.gov. Uh, someone said, can you tell us those grants that some companies are using? Uh, but it's www.schoolsafety.gov slash grants with an S uh, uh, dash finder dash tool. Um, and so uh, I'll, t I'll put it in, in here so you can find it. But at the end of the day, that is where you can find all types of grants. They have districts and schools have found grant money 
to pay for ID cards and digital ID card solutions and picture packages and all yearbooks and all or more. So just an FYI. Great. Thank you. I just threw the link Please. into the chat Please. so everyone can have access to that. Um, and yeah, that's just one of the many things that, again, just having these resources through SPOA um, is so amazing. It's the same thing. If you, if you're trying, if you get a lot of, a lot of, especially smaller companies that are growing, uh, get tied up in two things. One, insurance. The other is they don't know which insurances they need to have to do business with the district. Uh, we already have that on our website as, as a partner company that you can find. The second is uh, student data privacy. Um, states like Illinois that have unique laws. Um, and so we have all those resources for you under company. And it, you don't have to be a member to find those. Uh, they're on the site for anybody to look at. But it gives you the direct links and answers those legal questions that you might have. So, Great. Thank you. Um, just have a few more qu discussion questions. And then I do want to have time for you to just speak to the actual conference and then a few minutes at the end to finish up our Q&A. Um, but I think a good segue is just... I remember, you know, getting the order form back in the day, having to give it to my mom to pick a package. It could get lost in my backpack, uh, get crumpled, <laughs> just the normal kid type of stuff, which I know we've kind of discussed now being able to do both the, the regular classic order form also online. Um, that's just one way that I've seen the industry changing just in, in the past couple of years. But where do you see it going in the next five to 10? Sure. Uh, without question, uh, a lot of different avenues. I, I think there's, uh, we're in discussions right now with some school administrative software companies uh, that are testing already. Uh, the uh, So think about schools today. If you're a parent, you actually go on to see your child's like report card and whatnot through those school administrative softwares. Guess what traditionally is in the top left-hand corner of the screen? your picture. And so uh, some some of those companies are going to are testing uh, the ability to have your gallery linked. So if mom touches that throughout the year, oh, I didn't realize I could still order pictures right now. You know, that's that's a simple technology, but something that is insanely useful to have that type of partnership and relationship with those school admin softwares. Um, the other is is just we don't know what technology is going to bring without a question. We already are seeing, you know, some some radical changes in the digital ID card solutions world. Uh, and, and so the same process, you know, what if, you know, we make that digital ID card instant, but every time it's touched by mom or by that student, it goes to your gallery so that you can place your order right there. Um, you know, there's there's so many different solutions and opportunities we have. Um to kind of bring, you know, it's kind of like the licensing of, you know, I'm a diehard Marvel fan. Like I've seen everything um, and all the sitcoms. And so like, I totally, my son and I would be buying all kinds of Marvel stuff. Like it's those type of things that we as, as organizations, we as individual companies in school of photography, it, you just can't just stop and go, okay, we got this machine. We're just going to milk it as long as it mom's desires and are always changing schools desires are, are always changing and so we need to always be evolving always uh making it easier for mom to get access to photos uh we need to provide mom with the types of photos and and digital downloads and all of the things that she wants you know we were talking about our conference in south carolina you know, south carolina texas madly in love with their flags like you'll yeah. see <laughs> true or false like you're gonna see that flag on every other car that you're driving down the road right and so why not put that on borders right and and so when people see pride you know i, I did as marketing i love testing like i love arguing with the people that think that you know by throwing something at the wall and seeing what sticks i'm just numbers driven Me too. And so I, I i let numbers do the talking and bragging and and that's it everything else is just opinionated and so when you start doing like private schools and you it takes two years but when you put that private schools borders and their logo 
parents are proud that their kids go there. They're paying a lot of money to send their kids there. Watch what happens to your average order and watch what happens to your participation when you do things like that. When you add things like the South Carolina border, imagine what you know NFL and all of that has will do yeah, once we get the licensing piece in place. Those are where I see just aiding in our increased participation and profitability and sales. Um, and I'm sure you know the, with the advancement of AI and what we're seeing, none of us know what else is going to be in front of us here in the near future. But uh, exciting times, and it's best to be in front of that than just to wait. And you know, but the one thing that I'm a huge believer in is that if you're a school picture company, if you're going to sell a picture package, you really should be selling them a yearbook at the same time. Um, and why not have that perfect partnership uh, as as their provider of both school pictures and yearbooks? And there's lots of we have um, some fabulous business partners that would love if you're not selling your books and you want to you can go to our website under uh, resources for uh, companies and it's uh, the industry supplier list and it gives you who to contact, where to contact and all of that type of stuff. So lots of lots of newness coming. And there's no then the yearbook world. There's definitely at some point, especially with the the gallery sharing and that stuff, there's gonna be some digital solutions, I believe, in the coming years. So exciting stuff. I can't wait to see where everything goes. Um, but I think now is a great time to just kind of talk about that upcoming conference in July, yep. um, what we can expect. Again, I will be there. So make sure you come Ooh. to our perfectly clear booth. Um that's my plug for myself, but take it away. <laughs> um, yeah, so the conference, I'm not going to belabor it. You can just go to schoolphotographersofamerica.com and, and you can go to the conference. You can see it. We're, we're really excited. We've got a uh, just that Monday. We have some pre-conference stuff happening. So folks will be coming in on that Sunday. Uh, we actually have almost 30 some odd volunteers that are going out to a school in Greenville County. Uh, and we're actually helping revitalize that school. Um, the news, uh, the su superintendent is coming out with two news stations that they're going to do a kind of a video. And so we've got, everybody's going to be in the same shirt and, and it's about, uh, operation school smiles. Um, but it's really cool because that, that commercial, so to speak, right. So whether it's a, a 20 second, uh, news plug or, a, a you know, a minute news plug, that can be shared on everybody's. Uh, and, and I'm not talking about one company. I'm talking about for all companies, um, you know, that school photographers across the, the country and across the world uh, believe in our business partners. Um, and, and so schools are business partners. Uh, they are the conduit for which we get to mom. And so uh, having that type of exposure and relationship is huge. We also have uh, one of our big uh, partners, ImageQuicks, PhotoLinks, is, has their user group called MVP, which typically you know, draws 150, 200 folks uh, um, on Monday and a part of Tuesday. Uh, we have Sandler Training, which is world-class training, y'all. Uh, there's a good Southern word for you, y'all. Um, <laughs> I had to throw Dale, in a y'all or two. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and then Dale Carnegie. And then we're really excited. we got a new national partnership with Bambi HR. And Bambi is going to be offering companies that go ahead and join uh, the onboarding experience in person. Because so often, like, you you get a HR partner or someone like that. You know, it could be ADP or something. And all your training is, like, virtual, which is great. Webinars are great. But it's, man, when you're in person, you're in front of the computer, you have trainers in front of you, you just learn so much more. Uh, so we're really excited about that. And then um, uh, Tuesday, uh, some of those are still, and the, our boot camp. We have a, a boot camp that started last month. So it's not too late if you're watching this and you're like, man, I want a part of that. We're just a neutral boot camp. We're going to show you every lab, every business partner. And, and so, and we're just going, here's, you know, should you be an S course? Should you be a C course? Should you be an LC? And the tax implications on those. And we're just giving you guidance, you to make the decision. And we're not, we're not branded with anybody. Um, and then in, in-person photography training that Monday and Tuesday um, for those, the, that boot camp, And then the conference really starts with our, our exhibit hall opening at three o'clock on Tuesday uh, and has a huge welcome party uh, with uh, that. We're, we're not going to announce yet what it is, but it's pretty cool. It's going to be pretty awesome. Um, and then Wednesday is training sessions, breakout sessions all day, plus our exhibit hall. 
all the food you, you I promise you, everybody went last year is like, we had way too much food. We overserve <laughs> you and we do not go There's cheap. There's no such thing. Yeah. <laughs> we do not go cheap either. Like it is not like your typical, we're buying the top end stuff. And then on Thursday is general sessions, uh, elections update. Um, and so we're really excited. We got Chick-fil-A's customer service trainer coming in. We got Sony's Gene Froth, uh, uh, one of the first female uh, major league baseball play, player uh, photographers. We've got a, a state house representative, John Bradford, uh, who is uh, helping, uh, we're really excited, helping potentially write um, the first um, policy, or not policy, be law uh, bill uh, in the North Carolina legislature about the removal of commissions in, in all school photography. And so he's going to talk about what that looks like at state level and so how everybody can get in touch with their state legislature uh, and that advocacy side that's so powerful for our business. Um, and then we have one more, but I can't tell you that one yet, um, because it's in between two and we just haven't, uh, final the deal. Uh, and then the biggest event of all is, is Thursday night. And last year, um, there was a lot of, uh, it was really cool. A lot of people dressed up. They were really excited about the first industry awards. Uh, and this year we have already over 250 in attendance, I think 275, uh, that have already confirmed. And, um, it's, uh, it's a black tie. No, I mean, it's not tuxedo, but it's a formal affair. It's an awards when, and we're ending the evening with our first induction of hall of famers, uh, for the industry. And so we're really excited, um, about that event. And then, uh, we've already locked in 2024, uh, and we're really close to locking in 2025 and we're going to be making those announcements, um, uh, in about the next month. So Super exciting. And yeah. again, I'm, I'm very excited for Greenville. And uh, earlier, David and I were just talking about all the amazing things to do and, and see there. So it's definitely a good spot um, and not a very popular one for conferences. So it'll be a good opportunity to explore something new. Mm -hmm. Charleston is only a few hours away. So if you were to extend your trip, I'm happy to give any sort of uh, Charleston advice. Um, they're also at Greenville's at the base. Greenville's at the base of the Blue Ridge Mountains. When you walk oh, out true. of the hotel, your view is gorgeous. But when you walk out of the hotel, you're on Main Street, and it's just one of the most. Uh, we definitely, when I brought our board there, we have a leadership summit always uh, six months before the conference at the conference location, and so some of the boards like really David Greenville. Uh, I'm like, Delta can get you anywhere. Like if you get a direct flight to Atlanta, it, there's probably 14 uh, trips into Greens, uh, Greenville every day. Yep. Uh, and so people came in and they're like, whoa, this town's awesome. I'm like, told y'all, like it is just this small city, but it's just gorgeous, quaint, and, and people are going to love it. Um, and so um, you want me to start answering some of the questions that are on here? Yeah, we only have eight minutes left of the webinar. Um, so I did, I pulled a few. Um, so we actually have had two questions about this, um, both worded really similarly, but what does the future hold with the combo of AI in school That's photography? There's going to be a lot to come with that in, in A, from a you know, potentially workflow solution in the future. Uh, but one that's immediate is um, the the ability for AI uh, to write parameters uh, so that envision you're a, let's say you have 50 photographers, um, a mid-sized company, you've got 50 photographers and you think you know who is your top photographer, but do you really? And so AI gives you the opportunity to like every day grab you know, a random 50 images uh, from their job and score them based on what you're trying to achieve as a company, you know, centering, expression, eye direction, lighting, uh, exposure, all those things. And you might be shocked. And so AI is already there. Um, there's some people already testing this. Uh, and that's huge because, you know, so often people will hire someone and they don't really take the time to look at all their images and they're, it's a manual process. And, you know, next thing you know, you're two weeks in, you're like, oh, that was one of my best accounts. And so this, this gives you immediate, um, there's so many, <laughs> I, I promise you, I, I get lots of people that call go, can I speak at your conference about AI? And this is what we're, there is lots of people working on lots of projects 
that's the one that I know is already reality and some companies are already testing, but uh, there, there's a boatload of new products and workflows and solutions that are going to come because of AI. Yeah. And obviously another shameless plug for Perfectly Clear is that we do use a beautiful combination of both real science and artificial intelligence to help just speed up workflow, whether it's image correction or um, auto cropping, anything like that. Um, so there's definitely a lot happening in the industry around technology and AI. Um, and also it does seem like everyone in the school portrait industry working on things like AI are really aware of the rules around that, um, working with children, making sure that data sets are clean and have the right, uh, you're just allowed to use them. Um, so that's definitely a trend and I'm sure it will be spoken about quite a bit uh, oh, yeah. at SPOA. Yeah, we have, uh, I wanna say there's gonna be two breakout sessions on AI, um, so yes. Yeah, so attend SPOA and you'll get more <laughs> information. I do have another question, which I'm not sure if we'll be able to sure. answer this live or if this will have to be a follow-up, um, mm -hmm. but we do have someone from Europe here. They're interested in in trends, and can you tell them a little bit about percentage of digital downloads with no prints? Um, what I can tell you is, uh, yes, we have all that uh, information, um, and if you just want to send me an email, I'm happy to send you the basic report um, that has approximately like 46,000 parents that gave their opinion on that. Um, and so, you know, there's, there's another report that I could run um, by gauging each company individually. Uh, so I, I would tend to say, I would look at what parents are looking for uh, just because some companies don't offer it with a package or that it's offered independently, or it's all uh, only offered if you buy certain things. And so that doesn't give you a real gauge of a percentage, right? We all know data. It's how is data interpreted and is it clean when it's being interpreted so that you actually have real results? So I'd say at this point, I, I would look at what is mom's desire in comparison, because she was asked a question, if offered prints and digital download, uh, if offered digital download only, or would, or would you rather just have download only, or would you just rather have prints only? That type of data is really good for you to base some decisions off of versus different people's workflow or offerings, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I love that report. I've been looking at it quite a bit. Um, again, the data, it's always so important. And we've, um, we have this year, you know, we've had lots more responses that we're excited about, but we actually had some uh, state executives of like uh, elementary principals association send the survey out to all the principals that then they sent it to all their families. And we got a lot more school responses because it's a smart survey. So school, mm -hmm. it can keep school information or parent. And so we're really excited about the part. That's that partnership that, you know, by being a trade association, uh, we can partner with all those education associations, which literally gives us access like no other. And so we're really excited about this year's report. Next year, we're solely focusing on why did you not buy? So the the X's um, and, and so and the uh, yearbooks, K through eight yearbooks. That's going to be the focus of, of next year's survey. Already excited about it. Um, it looks like we have time for just one more question. Um, we have another person from across the pond. They're in the UK. Um, they say that winning new schools is hard. You often have to dislodge an existing relationship. Do you happen to have any tips or tricks to win new schools? Any best sales practices or approaches? Or perhaps is there any sort of resource around this? Yeah. Um, so I, would, I would definitely say first, look at sales training. You know, so, so many people, they've just never actually attended like a proper sales training. So Dale Carnegie, um, international company, uh, Sandler, um, uh, Richardson, um, there's some really good sales training out there. Uh, that's, it's not tricks. It's literally just learning how to relate to people in a consultive manner. Um, and so I, I don't, there's not like a one style approach, but you know, when I, well, I've always found it to be funny as well as good is that when you walk into a school and, and they're like, no, nah, we're happy. We've been using so-and-so I literally stop and go, well, I'm just curious what makes you so in love with them and just be quiet. 
and 90 percent of the people turn around and go oh well we're not in love with them oh so you're saying i got a chance and next thing you know they're laughing and you're in engaged conversation and you'll figure that out um but you know that's the sales questions are always the big questions there is no anybody that's been in this business you know 25 plus years will all tell you sales training is the first number one to that um because there are reps that can go sign 50 schools in a year and there's reps that struggle and give you every excuse because they can't even get three and the difference is a personality b positivity and you know are they an extrovert and how do they interact and appropriate with people and three is are they are they trained do they know what to sell how to sell um and, and be professional and you know you can you can take a school that you never thought you were going to get win it and after they sign the contract they're signing the agreement you literally look this is a sales thing you literally look um and, and you go sarah thank you so much i'm so excited to be your photographer um i i just hope my next meeting uh, goes just as good and what does a typical person say where are you going well now i'm going to the middle school you don't have them yet i don't oh let me make a phone call i have booked more schools i've walked into one where the principal called and the principal called for me, said, David's on his way. You got to meet with him. And I come out to, I show up at the school, go to the front desk. And they're like, are you David? Uh, yep. She already signed a contract. She asked me just to get with you and just figure out dates and stuff like that. And because we're really busy. I booked two schools just by asking that at the very end. But that's sales training, y'all. Uh, that, that, those are, I, I can't give tips and tricks. It's, it's really about being trained. You know, there's a reason people are, you know, the difference of, you know, typical military person and someone in special forces training, just training, repetitive training. So hopefully that helps. I think it definitely has. Um, I'm just sharing this one last resource. Um, so this is the website for school photographers of America and also David's email. Um, and then this is our uh, perfectly clear website and email if you want any other um, information about our technology. But other than that, I did want to thank you one more time, David, for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you. Been great speaking with you. I'm really excited to see you in a few months in person in Greenville. Oh. Um, and thank you to everyone that has attended this webinar. Um, we will be sending out the recording so you can watch it time and time again. But um, other than that, I think we are ending right on time. So thank awesome. you all again. Thank you. I got to run. I got to have a great day. <laughs>